So we've uh, set ourselves up to calculate the first moment of area. So once again, I've copied an instance of the cross-section down because we're going to be using different dimensions in different areas, and I want to be able to leave the trail of what we've done. I wouldn't necessarily do this in a, a simple problem, but for being able to see what the differences are and making sure that we get rid of any confusion, it works in this instance. We're going to do the first moment of area about two different locations. Uh, the first one is about the neutral axis or at the neutral axis. And, and that's a fairly common request because we know that shear stresses are going to reach their maximum at the neutral axis. And so we want to get the first moment of area or Q to be able to calculate that. The other one, which is again a very natural place to look at, is that the interface between the web and the flange, because we're going to have to design some sort of a connection there, whether it's a glued interface or welded interface, and we need to make sure that it will transfer the shear stresses between the two components of our composite section. So first off for the neutral axis, I, I need to label my areas again. It is a piecemeal calculation like we've done in the, in the other ones. Area 1 doesn't change because what we need to do is we need to pass a section or a plane through the area of interest. So in this case, it's the neutral axis or the centroidal axis, and then really throw away all of the cross-section on one side or the other, and it doesn't matter which side uh, we choose. So in this instance, I'll throw everything away uh, below the neutral axis. I do that not for simplicity, but to demonstrate how it works. Again, you'll get exactly the same answer no matter what you do. So we'll choose area one, as we did before, as the flange, and I'll hatch that out. And then I'm going to hatch out area 2. Now area 2 is different in this case because remember virtually we've thrown away everything below the neutral axis. So you, you can imagine that that's gone and all that leaves us for area 2 is this little stub in here. Now as before we'll start by putting down our formula. So Q denotes the first moment of area at the neutral axis is going to be equal to the sum of a prime at i, so the areas left on one side of our, our cut plane, multiplied by y at i. So before we go and start filling out numbers into our formula, what we want to do is go back to our cross-section and make sure that we get these dimensions labeled so that there's no confusion of what we're doing. So we need to know the centroid of area 1, which we already know, and its distance from the composite cross-section which again, we've already used in the last one. In this case, we actually label that Y1, and that's equal to 75 millimeters. Now, two in this case changes. So halfway up here is the centroid of our area two, and I can go ahead and draw that in, and that will be Y2. And if we need to figure out what that is, we know that this overall height, I've labeled it in here as 50 millimeters because uh, it, the web's height is 250 millimeters, the centroid's at 200, it leaves 50 still on that side, and half of that would be Y2, which we can label in here. So that brings us back to our formula. We'll do each of the pieces, so we start with piece 1, its area we know to be 300 millimeters multiplied by its thickness, which is 50 millimeters, and Y1, 75 millimeters, and to that we add area 2, which has a height of 50 millimeters. And the thickness of the flange is 60 millimeters. And its Y2 we determine to be 25 millimeters. That gives us a Q for the neutral axis. Should be a maximum at that point of 1.2 times 10 to the 6th millimeters cubed. Now the second part of this was to look at Q, or the first moment of area, at the flange web interface. Now to do that, of course, we pass our imaginary plane not at the neutral axis where it's shown, but actually up at the interface between the flange and the web. So this whole area 2 disappears and we're no longer considering it. So the only thing we're considering is actually area 1. So th this is very straightforward. Again, I'll, I'll write out my formula, but it's going to be quite simple because I only have one area to concern myself with 
Uh, I'll just call that the interface. And it will be a at i prime, y at i prime. And in this case, we only have this part of the equation. So we can just copy it right down there directly. It's, it's area, 300 millimeters, 50 millimeters. And it is still the distance between its centroid and the centroid of the composite section. So that doesn't change. That's 75 millimeters. And with that, we calculate that, and we get 1.125 times 10 to the 6th millimeters cubed. There we go. That's calculating the various cross-sectional properties, the centroid moment of inertia and the first moment of area at two different locations within our built-up T-beam.